Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold, the world's greatest redneck. And uh, con considering I have an aversion to pain, well, there will be no rednecks harmed in the making of this video. Okay? Uh, the other day, I uh, got into a little mess there. I was going to sharpen up those uh, countersinks that Chuck sent me. And I got out there and I got flustered and I forgot <laughs> half of the procedure I was going to do and wound up sharpening them by hand. And of course, like a lot of people pointed out, the flutes aren't going to be the same length, any of them, when I did them like that. And uh, they wouldn't even probably be anywhere near the same angle. So this gave me a loose end that needs tying up. And that's so why we've got another tying up loose ends video here. I'm going to go back and correct a little bit of my mistakes. And uh, look at that. Look, it's a medical breakthrough, and it was done by a redneck. I done got me one of them viruses. I captured it. <laughs> I'll go down in the history books. Did you guys see that? I'm not sure I did. I, I, wow. <laughs> okay. Anyway. We're going to go back and we're going to work on the uh, the little uh, countersinks. We're going to get the flutes all identically ground because that's what I got that fancy grinder for. And uh, I don't know. Must be something wrong with being a redneck because I got messed up there and forgot all about how I was going to grind the flutes equal. So that's a part of what we'll do today. And uh, and I noticed a little strange thing. I, I've got a new set of uh, gauge pins which takes me from now from 0.061 up to 7 eighths of an inch and I think that's probably good enough to set I hardly ever make anything bigger than 7 eighths I, I don't think I would be needing to gauge anything bigger than that of course I guess you know knowing my luck next week the only gauge pin I'll need all year will be a one incher <laughs> that could happen uh, but anyway I, I, there was something that I got curious about with uh, the gauge pins, and you're going to see a good use of them. In the meantime, keep your double bubble handy, and let's get on with the video. Yesterday, I received this really handy item, which happens to be uh, a set of uh, pin gauges from 0.61 to, I'm sorry, 0.061 0.250 inches okay so that's up to a quarter of an inch and uh, let me straighten out here I'm making a mess and since I have it I started playing around with some things out of curiosity what brought on the curiosity was I guess a couple of years ago maybe three years ago I, I made a sound suppressor for my 22 pistol and uh, when I was going to make it I, I made a took a little piece of round aluminum and I made a piece to go in the barrel so I could see whether you know what kind of a diameter that I could see over and still you know sight have the sights working and uh, I discovered that even though I cut the thing to 0.22 inches, it wouldn't go into a 22 barrel. And I, I you know, <laughs> I was kind of surprised by that. And I had nothing but just my own measurements of a piece of metal until now to, to actually prove that there's uh, a strange curiosity here. And what is that? Well, I tried it in two different size barrels I say different size from two different manufacturers and I got two different results for instance we've got this guy here this is a Ruger Hunter 22 long rifle and there's no ammunition all, all the firearms that I show you here have been checked to see that they're not loaded I'm not totally crazy all right anyway you would think a 0.22 plug gauge will go in there how much you want to bet 
go down here and we get point two nope point two two zero she won't go let's go down a couple of thousands uh, point uh, two one eight <clears throat> she won't go no go Oh, I was on the wrong one. <clears throat> this is point two one eight. It will almost start, but it's stuck there. All right. Then we go to point two one seven, and it goes in. You see, point two one seven will go in. Now this is a twenty-two long rifle, known as being point two two inches. So that. That wasn't where the thing was going to go anyway, because I was going to put it on a uh, Smith & Wesson. The reason I was going to put it on a Smith & Wesson because the Smith & Wesson has a threaded barrel. I'm going to back this thing up so it's easier for me to stay on screen. Okay, so we just put this pin into the Ruger. It won't go in the Smith & Wesson. So we'll go down a thousand. 216 it won't go 215 it just barely starts but it won't go in as it sticks 214 there we are 0.214 so one manufacturer makes a smaller hole and now is this just these two items no it's not let's look at the famous 1022 from Ruger. We got the 1022 barrel here. You can see this is a 1022. No ammo in it. This is a genuine 1022. All right. You get the point two two. Point two two zero. Won't go. Well, dang it! Keep picking up the wrong one. But 0 0.220 won't go. Let's go down to 218. 0.218. It just barely slides in. Okay. So we know that it's a, a tighter barrel even than the, than the pistol. Or a larger barrel, I'm sorry. Here's another empty weapon. This is the Smith and Weston 1522. So we'll just try the 218 that went into the Ruger. And it won't go in the Smith and Weston. Let's try the 217. 217 slides in. So there we go. It is consistently, every time I try them out, the smaller bore is on the Smith and Weston makes you wonder doesn't it I don't know what's good I'm not saying one's better than the other or or any such thing as that it was just a curiosity that I noticed and I've got other Smith & Wesson items and all the pistols are .214 I don't have any more Smith & Wesson rifles to check out but I did think that was interesting Maybe you didn't. I don't know. All right. In the in the video I made last week with these little cutters, I got to a certain point and got frustrated when I couldn't sharpen the the big flat edges of these uh, you know of these little uh, counter sinks, and I forgot all about the fact that I was going to go and clean up all of the uh, flutes on the stone. So anyway. This is where I meant to be last week. I'm out across there. Move around to the next one. Alright, now they're all the same uniform height. So I think it'll cut even better.
Boudreaux went to the dentist's office and went in there and he asked the dentist, he said, how much you get for pulling uh, one of them aching tooth out? And the dentist said, well, with gas, it would be $75. Boudreaux said, oh, whoa, my shy, well, that's way too high. He says, how about if you take that needle and poke it around in that tooth there with, with some Novocaine? He says, how much it cost to pull it out then? Then he said, oh, well, I imagine in that case it'd be $50. But he said, oh, what's, that's still pretty dang high, you know. He says, uh, what if you just take them pliers and reach in there and pull it out? Then he said, well, yeah, I guess I, guess I could do that for five dollars. But he said, oh, now that's what I'm talking about. And he opens the door and says, Clotel, babe, come on in here and get in a cherry. He'll take you next. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.